Hello. This is another episode in this series I have of ranking every episode of The Office. This is the second in the series. We're going to cover 175 to 166. Uh, if you want to check out all of the episodes in this series, uh, subscribe to The Donut Bag either on YouTube or um, a podcast. Uh, so let's get started. Number 175, Season 9, Episode 3, Andy's and Ancestry. Nellie plays a trick on Andy after researching his ancestry. Dwight teaches Aaron a new language, and Pam tries to teach Nellie how to drive. This is a mostly forgettable episode, except for one thing. The cold open was Asian Jim. Asian Jim is one of the greatest cold opens ever. Uh, at some point, I got to do a ranking of the cold opens because this was amazing. It was one of the greatest uh, pranks that uh, that was ever pulled on Dwight. So absolutely perfect. But the rest of the episode is just very forgettable. Uh, Nelly plays a trick on Andy and says that he's related to Michelle Obama. He's all excited about that until... Uh, it's told to him that, hey, that probably means that your family had slaves or something like that. So that there's a the whole thing about that. Um, Dwight teaches Aaron Klingon. Who cares? Uh, Pam tries to teach Nellie how to drive. OK, whatever. Um, the only good thing is this episode uh, was early in season nine and furthered the storylines about um uh, Jim and Pam Nelly uh, told Pam that she should make a mural in the warehouse and Jim and Daryl talk about basically getting out of the office and starting their new company. Episode 174 season nine, episode 17, the farm uh, Dwight's brother and sister return to the farm for an aunt's funeral. Meanwhile, Todd Packer returns to make amends to his former co-workers, but Pam is skeptical. So this was supposed to be the episode to, to launch into a spinoff of The Office, where it was just about Dwight on a farm. Why on earth would they make a spinoff of The Office, a, war, a comedy about the workplace, about Dwight on a farm? It makes no sense. Dwight is one of the greatest TV characters ever, and Ryan Wilson absolutely nailed it. What just did a great job. But you're gonna make a, an episode, a, a, a series about that? That just didn't make sense. And I don't know why they didn't. They decided not to do it. Maybe because nobody liked it or thought it was a really bad idea. I don't know. Uh, the, uh, the the thing about Packer giving everybody cupcakes and poisoning them. Um, okay, that's revenge because they, they got rid of him. So, okay, I can, I can appreciate that. Number 173, season nine, episode 13, junior salesman. Dwight gets to hire a new salesman to replace Jim when he is at his other job. But will he promote Clark or go with one of his unqualified friends instead? Basically, this is just Dwight and his weirdo friends. And okay, cool. I, they're all a bunch of freaks. Okay, cool. I get it. I just did not care about these characters. I didn't, I didn't care about the story, whatever. Uh, Jim tries to get David Waller to invest in his company, and that turns out to be a disaster. Dwight gets a little bit of revenge on him. Uh, okay. I mean, he deserves it. Jim played a million pranks on, on Dwight, so good for uh, Dwight getting some revenge. Eventually... Uh, Dwight eventually Clark is selected to be the the junior salesman and he is deskmates with Pam and Dwight and it is really cute that Pam says to Dwight at one point do you want to play a prank on the new guy and Dwight says absolutely I do which is a callback to what Jim said many years ago and uh they do this Pam gives him uh, saran wrap and, and something else. I don't know what the what the prank was supposed to be, but Dwight, being Dwight, takes it to mean I'm going to take the saran wrap and and cover Clark's head so that he can't breathe and suffocates. Love it. I, I love that's that's perfect. Perfect Dwight. It was uh it, it was perfect. It was really cute. Uh, at the end, 
um, Jim says it's, you know, he's happy that it got to be Clark. And he said uh, it's important, you know, for for her to be with, you know, the, who who's who is supposed to be with uh, Pam, blah, 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 blah. And it cuts to the boom, my guy. And God, that is the. The second worst character in the entire series is that Boom Mike guy. The number one worst character was the guy that did the the vandalize the mural. But this guy is is he's so creepy and oh, I just hated that story. Number 172, season eight, episode 13, jury duty. Jim gets caught in a lie about his week of jury duty and new questions emerge when Angela gives birth to a premature baby. This was dumb. Jim had a, a day of jury duty and he turned it into a week off okay get it and he lied about it and then he got andy to lie for him uh dwight pounces on this and tries to get jim fired and catch him in the lie okay whatever uh the cold open was one of the worst ever it was andy wanting time in the warehouse just so he could dance i don't care about andy i hate him i hate Every scene he's in, every episode he's in, I just think he never was any good in the office. I just think he just sucks. So I hated this. Uh, so Jim eventually gets caught in the lie, and he apologizes. Everybody's mad at him, and then Pam brings the kids, and it is absolute chaos. And Jim says, well, I was basically off to, to help Pam with the kids. It wasn't a vacation. The office actually sympathizes uh, with him because – they they see what hell he's in, so uh, they they sympathize with him. Number one seventy one, season eight, episode six, Doomsday. Dwight installs a Doomsday device on the office computers that could get everyone fired if they make too many mistakes. While Gabe tries to hit on one of Daryl's warehouse employees. Okay, um, the, the the cold open was Andy trying to get everybody to sing closing time. That was cute. Um, you know, Stanley's the only one that that uh, went along because it means he that he got the leave for the day. Okay, whatever. Uh, this whole doomsday device thing was just silly. It was basically just a, a reason to say Dwight maybe maybe Dwight is uh, becoming more human and uh, doesn't actually hate everyone. Uh, but how do you install a doomsday device that detects mistakes? What what is this? What is this crap? Uh, some advanced AI or something like that. Um, so eventually, uh, so what was supposed to happen was it was supposed to send an email to Robert California to shut down the branch or something like that and get everybody fired. I don't know. Um, uh, Jim goes to where Robert California was playing racquetball or something like that. And Jim is basically just a big dork. You would think he would be athletic, but no. And they go to Dwight's farm and ask him to uh, reconsider. And basically he just shows, he shuts it off because uh, he's, he, he becomes a little more human. Okay. Whatever. Um, I hate Gabe. So I hate anything of all of them. I guess he tried to hit on uh, what's her, what's her name? I forget her name. And uh, that uh, he's just, he's just weird and creepy. I don't, I don't like him. Number 170, Season 9, Episode 7, The Whale. The office trains Dwight to sell to a female client without being offensive, only to discover that the client is Jan Levinson. Oscar and Angela both think the senator is cheating on him, and Jim has trouble on an important conference call. So uh, the cold open was Andy was on a boat, and the the he was facetiming the office and the boat the, the phone fell in the water who cares i i hate andy um the thing about angela and oscar they 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 spied on him at a gym with some guy and angela was waiting for the senator to be with some girl and there obviously there is no girl and but oscar was thinking that he was cheating on him too um at the end angela realizes that it's oscar that's, that's cheating on uh the, the senator is cheating on Angela with Oscar. So that continues that story. Um, Jim was trying to do a, a conference call, but couldn't basically the continuation of that story where he is, um, you know, trying to get to with this new company, but still trying to stay with Dunder Mifflin. It was just a big mess. And I think he realized that he needs to just go directly to um, Philadelphia. 
Uh, but the whole thing is the return of Jan Levinson, who we haven't seen in a couple seasons. And she was one of the best characters on The Office. She is with a new company now. And the only reason that she wants to be the one wants Dunder Mifflin as a um, as a vendor is to get back at David Wallace because he got her fired. Uh, she's mad that he sent Pam and Dwight to uh, um, um, to, to get the sale. And it looks like it's going to be a disaster. But then Dwight brings out Clark because she re- he remembers that she fooled around with uh, the uh, a, a young assistant um, back when she was with Dunder Mifflin. So she brings um, Clark and basically pimps him out. This is, I think this crosses a line. He basically he basically Clark is basically a prostitute in this situation. That I, not cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's just that just that goes, that just goes over the line. I'm sorry. Number one sixty nine, season eight, episode five. Spooked. Aaron is worried that she's about to get fired after she organizes a disastrous office Halloween party for Robert and his son. Meanwhile, Robert probes the minds of the employees to come up with a perfectly spooky story. This was a very forgettable episode. The cold open was Andy was approving everybody's Halloween costumes. And uh, we learned that Meredith went to England to see William and Kate get married. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, when 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 Robert brings his son, they, they switch things up and he wants and, and Aaron tries to make it more dark and spooky by asking Gabe to bring some horrible movie, whatever. I don't I, who cares? Um, Robert asked everybody what they're afraid of so he can make, and in the end, he makes some spooky story incorporating everything they're afraid of. Who cares? This is just a very forgettable episode. Number 168, season nine, episode one, new guys. Dwight and Jim are intimidated by the office's new additions who are considered younger versions of themselves. Meanwhile, Andy tries to make Nellie's life miserable and Angela tries to get rid of one of her cats. So this was the beginning of season nine, which is the final season. So a lot happens. And usually in episode one of every season, it is a return from summer. So everybody says what they did for the summer. Um, Kevin killed a turtle. Kelly went off to Miami. She thought it was Miami, Ohio, uh, um, Florida, but it was Miami, Ohio. Uh, and Ryan just happened to leave with her. I think in real life, the, um, they left to work on the Mindy Project or some other show or something like that. Um, Jim and Pam, uh, this is the beginning of their story where uh, they – Basically, Jim realizes that his life is stale. Um, the beginning is uh, this is the first time that we see Jim and Pam talk to the people behind the mic. We, we've never seen that before in the series. And so we'll, unfortunately, we'll see more of that. Um, she she says, why, why are you still here? <laughs> it's been nine years, which is a really good question. And they say and they say, well, we want to see how it turns out with you. And she says, yeah, I guess there was a lot of drama in the beginning. But now it's really boring, uh, and uh, Jim has this this look. Um, and when he talks to new Jim, he realizes that new Jim is full of you know young and full of ambition. That that used to be Jim, and so Jim realizes that his life is stale. Okay, uh, there's a story about how Andy does um, uh, came back from some retreat to be more assertive, and he put a. He put up a slack line and the new guys could do it, but Dwight couldn't even he tried like a million times. And um, so Dwight tries to do a tight wire between buildings. And he tries to ask Pam to be the counterweight and Pam says, hell no. And he tries to do it and he gets halfway through and he he gets stuck. And then um, a fire truck has to come pick him, get rescue him, whatever. But basically this sets up. Um, you know, some of the stories for season nine. Number 167, season eight, episode nine, Mrs. California. Robert brings his wife to the office so she could find a job, but he gives Andy conflicting messages about whether to hire her. Meanwhile, Aunt Dwight opens a gym in the building and tries to persuade Daryl to join. 
Um, the cold open was Dwight had a standing desk and he was he was uh, yelling at everybody for sitting down all the time. So he stands, but then he realizes that it hurts to stand all the time. So he he makes this contraption. So he looks like he's standing, but he's actually sitting. Jim notices this and 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 knocks him out. Um, any any scene with Jim and Dwight is is awesome. Uh, <laughs> at some oh so. Robert brings his wife and be, and Aaron and I'm, I'm sorry, Andy and Jim are talking in his office. Robert comes in and says, I'm about to bring my wife. Whatever you do, do not offer her a job. So he brings her in and uh, he's showing her around and Andy is basically doing what he said. He's like, sorry, we don't have anything for you. And Robert keeps insisting. Do, do you, you have to have something. You have to have something. And Andy is so confused. This was actually done perfectly. I hate Robert California, but I love James Spader. I think he's a great actor. He's amazing in the blacklist. That was, that was such a good series. Uh, so nothing against the actor. It was just, he was given poor material. I think Robert California was just a horrible character. Uh, but this was such a good episode because the way that, he was working he was going back and forth with uh with andy was just perfect uh it was just it was just awesome at one point he's showing the wife around and and he says well maybe you could do sales and dwight says sales is the second easiest job in the world the first is being a mom so i shared this i i share quotes from from tv shows uh, a lot and I shared this and people got so mad. They didn't realize it was an, a, a quote from the office. So that's what I get for quoting something from season eight of the office. Where, you know, one of the, uh, one of the worst seasons. Anyway, it is just funny how uh, Robert and his wife are, there's just, it's conflicting. Um, and it just gets really awkward. And basically Andy admits yeah, we want you, but he doesn't want you. So it just got really nasty. And, and Andy tries to throw Jim under the bus. It's like, well, Jim was there too. He'll tell you. And Jim hears this and just runs away. And he tries to escape, but he can't. He 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 climbs up the building. He loses a shoe. That was that was, that was silly and funny. But uh, I I actually really liked um, Robert California. This that was that was good. Number one sixty six, season eight, episode twenty three, turf war. Dwight and Jim fight with Syracuse over a client after Robert shuts down the Binghamton branch and Andy sees an opportunity for revenge. Meanwhile, Robert tries to figure out the contents of a drunken voicemail to Nellie. Um, the cold open was really dumb. It was Gabe and Dwight in an abs competition or some stupid thing like that. I don't know. Um, but this was the last episode before the season, season eight finale. And uh, so a lot was going to be, you know, set up for the for the finale because we know in the finale that uh, um, David Wallace comes back, buys Dunder Mifflin, and Robert California is done, and Andy comes back uh, to work there. So um, Andy sees Andy just happens to be in the office. He hears all the commotion about um, them fighting over new customers. Because basically the the guy from Syracuse came over to argue with Jim and Dwight over these new customers. And he goes there first, goes to this customer and says, sign up with my new paper company. This is really weird because Andy sucks at sales, but he convinces this. This must be a really dumb customer because he convinces this customer to sign up with a company that doesn't even exist. So really smart. Um, it was really cute when so then. Jim and Dwight and the Syracuse guy, they race to the customer also. And it was really cute with Jim and Dwight in the car. And Dwight says, hit the turbo. Does this thing have Nas? He's like, uh, Jim's like, oh, yeah, he has Nas. Get ready. And it was, he just turned the, uh, the, the windshield wiper on. That was cute. Um, so Andy gets the customer. And then he first goes to Robert California and says, okay, I got one of your biggest customers. Bring me back or we'll do, do what I want. And Robert delivers this great line. He says, I will not be blackmailed by some ineffectual, privileged, effete, soft penises debutante. You 
want to start a street fight with me? Bring it on. You're going to be surprised how ugly it gets. You don't even know my real name. I'm the blooming lizard king. <laughs> that was so great. And we learned in the next episode that Robert California is actually not his real name. Um, so that was great. Uh, Pam and Nellie bond because it was Pam's job to find out what, what was on Nellie's phone or something like that. And uh, she takes her phone and Pam is looking on the phone and sees a bunch of messages about basically that Nellie's a shopaholic and also that she's trying to adopt, but, but can't. So, I mean, her life is kind of sad. So Pam and Nellie bond over that. Um, but yeah, it was just a, it was a major episode because it was the, the second to last episode of season eight. So that is it for these next 10 i try to do these uh, 10 at a time so um yeah follow follow the the donut bag podcast or follow me on youtube to get the rest of these uh episodes thanks for watching or listening bye